Right. You know this gentleman. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> right, I might have. Right. And this is Angelia Weaver. Hello. She, her dream nice was to meet you, Mr. President, because she has right. such admiration for you. So this is fulfilling her dream today. And her mother, Mrs. Yeah, Weaver, is also Angelia. <laughs> And her husband, James Weaver. Hello there. You're doing all right? They're from Arkansas, from Greenwood, Arkansas. They live on a farm. Well, why don't we get you all in here? Good, you all take the chips. <laughs> That's Arkansas. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got some more here, Mr. Ray. Well, well, thank you very much. He's got a big package over there. Well, well, I'm most grateful for you. You want to by the president? Yes, Angelina. Let me put these. You and the president are going to have a picture together. Yeah, here's a there you go. All right. Very good. Don't you get closer. Yeah, don't you want to be on the other side? We can see you're right there with the rest of it. And you have to smile. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Secretary, right here. Thank you, sir. Thank now, you. Now, wait one second. <laughs> <laughs> this is a jar with that seal engraved on it, and inside the jar, <laughs> and this is a pin with the crest, presidential crest, and this is a like keychain. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Isn't that great? <laughs> That's great? I bet he'd like a whole thing to do. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for my presence. <laughs> She's worried that she didn't get to bring you in. <laughs> Well, we'll all go into the party now and, and uh, have some fun next door, okay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I shall be in shortly. Good. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Oh, <laughs> goodbye to someone who has served so faithfully for almost seven years, first as head of public liaison here at the White House, and since 1983 as Secretary of Transportation. You've helped American transportation make tremendous strides in safety, efficiency, and competitiveness during your tenure. As a result of four and a half years of your boundless energy and tireless advocacy of safety, the skies, the seas, the railways, and the highways of this nation are safer than ever. Your leadership in encouraging Americans to use safety belts, refrain from drinking and driving, have helped save countless lives and prevented thousands of <coughs> crippling injuries. You've led the way in our national campaign against drug and alcohol abuse. The Department of Transportation is the first civilian government agency to implement a random drug testing program. And during a time when travel has never been safer, you have helped increase competition in industries that were traditionally stifled by government regulation. And Elizabeth, under your stewardship, the Department of Transportation has shown tremendous leadership in privatization and federalism. The sale of Conrail, which reduced the deficit by almost $2 billion, was the largest initial industrial public offering in United States history. You also transferred Washington National and Dulles airports to a regional authority in something that's been tried since 1949, unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> so, in closing, I want to repeat something I said a few months ago when you presented me with a check for nearly $2 billion for the sale of Conrail. I take full credit. <laughs> Appointing one of the best secretaries of transportation ever.
miss you at the cabinet table. I want to express my gratitude and friendship as well as my best wishes for the future. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, Mr. President, first of all, let me just say how much I appreciate those beautiful words that uh, you have just spoken. I will cherish them always as I will cherish what is in this beautiful box, I'm sure. And I think back over the almost seven years, as you said, uh, the opportunity that you've given me, the high privilege of serving first as your assistant for public liaison here at the White House, where we sat around this table and uh, debated many issues. And then, of course, as your Secretary of Transportation for almost five years. You realize I've served longer in this position than any other secretary, and it's hard to believe that that's because I've loved it. I have loved it. And uh, we've had wonderful, challenging, tough issues to deal with, and uh, it's been my privilege to be able to serve in this position. And uh, certainly, I have the highest esteem and affection for you and for Nancy and all that uh, you have done for this country and will continue to do, and I just hope that in some small way I can continue to, to be of service. And of course, as I look to the future, uh, I'm sort of uh, putting down one cause at DOT and taking up another and to have the privilege of participating in the democratic process of selecting the next leader of the free world is uh, no small responsibility. And I look forward to the opportunity to be involved. And I think above all, our goal is to make certain that uh, we retain the White House, Mr. President. <laughs> Even my Democratic friends in the audience are smiling. <laughs> And certainly we want to continue your wise policies in the future. And so I just uh, look forward to being a, a part of that process. But let me just say that um, among the many things that uh, the First Lady has accomplished is uh, to go to war on drug abuse and to make such a contribution in this area. And that's been one of the things at the department that has been a, a privilege for us to be involved in. As you mentioned, we were the first civilian department to undertake random drug testing as a part of our overall safety <laughs> initiatives. And the courts have just upheld us, Mr. President. That's the good news. So we're making progress down that path. But uh, when I came to the department, I felt there was no way that I could uh, make a difference for people better than undertaking the safety <coughs> initiatives. And we've done that across all modes. We've had the three safest years in the air. We've had the two safest on our highways and the best year on our railroads last year. And uh, obviously as we look to the future, deregulation has been such a tremendous benefit uh, in the air for the traveling public. We have people flying who never thought they'd have the means to fly. And with that has come an enormous growth in the system. And one of our challenges has been to stay ahead of that growth curve. And that's going to be a continuing challenge for my successor and probably successors on down the road uh, to, to be very much on top of that uh, issue. But uh, certainly it's been a, a privilege to have a chance to work with uh, what you have done, your leadership on age 21. We found that the fatalities have dropped about 13% among teenagers as all but one state have uh, gone to the, the minimum 21 drinking age. And these are just a few of the, of the many initiatives that we have enjoyed participating in. Uh, privatization has been a wonderful one in terms of being able to transfer out of the federal government certain functions that can be, we think, performed more efficiently and at less cost in the private sector. We have sold three railroads, Mr. President. Conrail, you're most familiar with. <laughs> that was a tough one. <laughs> And I think I'd just like to conclude by mentioning privatization of space because that was a, a tough issue, but maybe it has, in terms of the future, as far-reaching ramifications as anything this team and many of them are here today has had the privilege of working on because it's going to help to keep us on the cutting edge of space. Uh, we're presiding over the development of a fledgling uh, new private sector space transportation industry, and already they have 20 reservations to launch to compete against the French Ariane, the Russians, the Chinese, and to be globally competitive in a, in a new field. And that happened because we were able to, uh, to move this particular function um, off the shuttle and into the private sector where it can be performed at less cost. 
So again, I thank you so much for the privilege of working on these and other initiatives and with a great team of people. Uh, and I will certainly cherish the memories. It pulls at the heartstrings today. No question about that, because we've been a real family. But I want to introduce just a few special guests, if I may. Your Adopt-a-School program has been one that's been particularly meaningful to us at the Department of Transportation. Princess Whitfield is the principal of High Junior High School. is a student at Hyde, and she just represents all the fine young people who have benefited, hopefully, from our tutors. She has a 4.0 academic average. Freight Railroad, there was a wonderful dinner to celebrate, and the gift that I was given was a scholarship for a Hine Junior High School student to go to college. And we're real excited about that, to study economics. And uh, I understand that's been repeated a second time, Francis, so it looks like that may be a permanent thing. Let's hope so. <laughs> we're offering economics as a pilot this year to see what it feels like. So. Wonderful. <laughs> Very, good. Very good. And then I want to introduce to you Angelia Weaver, who is from Arkansas. Angelia is a very special guest of mine today, and her dream was to meet President Reagan, whom she admires very greatly. And Angelia, just turn and let folks say hello to you. Our parents, James and Angelia Weaver, are here today, and also Carolyn Wagner, Carolyn, please come up. Her husband, Bill, <coughs> Carolyn started the program to fulfill a dream, where a young person who has a dream, she makes sure it's fulfilled. And I was fortunate enough to meet them in Arkansas, and they're very special guests today. And I'd just like to say to my mother, I'm so pleased that you're here, mother. <laughs> Johnson from Salisbury, and my nephew John, and all my dear and special friends who are gathered from different phases of my life. I love you all, and thanks for everything. Thank United States, accompanied by Dr. Jenninger, President of the Bundestag of the Federal Republic of Germany.
you. Ladies and gentlemen, your friends. On behalf of the German Bundestag and on behalf of all the German people, I wish this way. had one aspiration in common, the desire for freedom, which today holds the German and American people together in partnership and in friendship. Mr. President, we, but what is, what is most clearly etched in our minds is this. The unity of the Alliance cannot be preserved without close, close unity with the United States of America. In an alliance, ladies and gentlemen, if we continue along this path, I need not fear for the future of our two nations and peoples. Thank you very much. what is now the United States. Since that time, German Americans have helped forge the ideals and dreams that have built our nation. It was a German American, John Peters. Senger's defense was that he had printed the truth. He won, and the principle he established lives to this day, that the press can and must be free to tell the truth. Freedom found his first job after graduating from the Royal Polytechnic Institute in Berlin. No project could go forward, he wrote, without, in his words, an army of counselors, ministers. No executive, Sorry. no arrogant chief magistrate. The writer of those words was named John Wilkes Booth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was named John Robley, and he designed and with his son built. deep and fertile. It's helped nourish and cultivate our national heritage, our national accomplishments, and our next has been built. That's why our people have made the sacrifices to build and maintain our military strength in the face of the missiles and armies of the Warsaw Pact. In the last six and a half years, we've stood firmly together. And now, as a result, America made its reduction proposals were not serious. After all, the Soviets would never agree to actual arms reduction, certainly not to the zero option for U.S. and Soviet intermediate range ground launch nuclear weapons. The agreement toward which America and the Soviets are now moving is not happening because we, America, Germany, and our allies have been weak. And it is, as you know, nothing short of historic. Never before has an agreement actually abolished on with General Secretary Gorbachev to sign this agreement, and I look forward to that day. None of us should ever forget, however, that all that we've achieved for world peace could never have happened without the strong alliance and friendship between the United States. Court for the first time ever to extend the protection of federal civil rights laws to purely private contracts. Those who've been distorting his record have said over and over he's going to turn back the clock on civil rights. It's amazing they can find a room big enough for them to get in front of the cameras. Their noses must be soaking and demeaning the judicial selection process. I hope we haven't come to a time when good men and women are afraid to accept nominations to the bench for fear. So I hope that before you leave Washington, all of you will take time to let your senators know that you want to see Robert Bork on the Supreme Court. I bet you right now she's wondering if I put some sunblock on my Facebook. <laughs> I did. <laughs> she can't hear me. <laughs>
<laughs> well, now to get back to the matter at hand. And that means there's a proclamation for me to sign. of our Declaration of Independence. Oh. It's a historic document in its own right, and uh, we thought that the President might like to have it as a memento of this day and of our thanks and appreciation for signing the uh, Declaration, uh, the, the proclamation, which honored German-Americans everywhere and German-Americans of all times. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. 